Right, my lovely apprentices, today I have a challenge for you. My potion needs to be 500 millilitres. Hmm. Magic potions is an activity where the children need to create 500 millilitres of a magic potion. They actually need to use five different measurements to make their 500 millilitres and read scales very carefully to create their potion. What do you think we might need to think about if we are making ourselves a magical potion? You have to be able to read capacity. Aha! Uh -huh. There's some good thinking going on over there. You're going to have to be able to read today some different scales. But I need to ask you a bit further about that, because how do we read scales? Well, if you look at a scale, there'll be lines, and the lines worth something. OK, and you can use that to work it out? Yeah. Well done. OK, there's one other thing I'm thinking about, and that's actually how to make 500 millilitres. Because if you're using five different potions, and mixing them together, you're going to need to think about something else to do with numbers. What are you going to need to think about? Sharifa? Maybe all of them have to be 100 millilitres. That's very good thinking because five lots of 100 does make 500. Is that the most tricky way that you could make 500 or the easiest way you could make 500? The easiest way because you can do many possible. The reason the children need to work out five amounts that total 500 millilitres is because later on in their activity, what they'll need to do is use these measurements to create their potion. 500 millilitres, but you are not allowed to use the easy way that Sharifa said, 100, 100, 100, 100 and 100. You've got to think of a different way. The children then go off to their tables in groups and try to find five amounts that total 500 millilitres. This is a starter where they can explore some number work. Yeah. Right, have a look at the board for me. You can see there's a measuring cylinder there, just like the ones we're about to use. I use the interactive teaching programme from the Primary National Strategy to help the children to read scales and think about how much more liquid they will need to create 500 millilitres. Is it 25? Absolutely. Let's check, though, by counting, shall we? 25, 25 50, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 150, and stop. Good. OK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by filling it up with some liquid. I'm actually going to put in there 200 millilitres, and you can see it filling up Try and look at where you think it's going to go to. But what I actually would like you to tell me is how much more I would need to put in to make it go to 500. What do you think, Sharifa? Um, the answer is 300 because I counted them 50s and end up being 300 left. All right, OK, so you used the, the markings that were there yeah. and you counted 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. You counted on in 50s. Good girl, well done, that's brilliant. Now the fun really starts. The children go off to their tables in their groups and they try to create their 500 millilitre potion using their whiteboard activity from earlier. No, still. Still. Hubble, hubble, toil and trouble. Pour them in on the double. Oh, wow. wow. How much liquid have I now got? All together, we had one, two, three, four potions. It's a fabulous opportunity for speaking and listening and collaborative group work. All right, we've got our muffins today, all right? We're going to get to make our chocolate muffins with chocolate chips, all right? Now, this is our maths, though, so we need to think about why we're actually doing muffins in our maths. Muffin making is uh, a way that we can uh, get the children to think about their, their weighing skills, uh, being able to think about how they can accurately measure things to make sure that they end up with the best finished product. The beginning of the lesson is an important time for the children to be able to see what scales they're going to be using. They can look at what each of the intervals is worth and then they're going to be able to use that information when they come to weighing out their ingredients later.
If we don't know what the little gaps in between each of the weights are, then our weighing of all our ingredients is completely wrong. All right, and is our muffin going to taste very nice then? No. Thank you. Probably the biggest amount you're going to be looking at today is about 200 grams. If I jump up to 200, let's see how many jumps I actually do, OK? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I've got eight jumps to get to 200. If I look at that now, is there anybody here who thinks they might know what that number is? That slightly longer interval there. OK, Elliot, can you tell me what that middle marker would be worth? 100. 100 what? Kilograms. Kilograms or grams? Grams. Grams. Well done. Good boy. The visualiser is a really useful tool to be able to zoom into the actual scales that the children will be using. They can actually see the intervals. They can see how they're going to be using it later on. Very good. It's quite a nice idea to be able to set up a table with the flour, the milk, the sugar, and they can actually come to that table and take those resources back to their table. It's going to be noisy. The children are going to be talking about the, the facts. They're going to be talking about the intervals on the scales. They're going to be making sure that they've got their weight exact because they obviously want to win. They want to have the best muffin. Uh, and also because of the nature of it, there will be flour, there will be sugar and other bits and pieces, whether they be on the floor, at the table or the children. It's one that you might need a cloth for at the end of. One of the biggest things that you'll find with this lesson is the fact that the children genuinely are talking to each other about weighing. They're talking about the intervals, they're talking about how they're going to make sure that their muffin tastes the best at the end of it. Have you measured it? Yeah. Good. 150 grams. Yep. Good. 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 Thank you. I think Overall, the biggest thing that you could say about this is the fact that it gets everybody involved. Every child in that classroom has a purpose. They know it's going to be done for a reason. That's enough, that's enough. Yeah, but just put your thumb in there. You crack it out. Just pull it, pull it. Make sure not... It's not just a muffin that goes home at the end of the day and either gets put at the bottom of the bag or gets eaten. The fact is they've got this big sort of act of being able to bring their muffin up or have their muffin judged in front of the rest of the class. After we've uh, put the muffins in the oven, the best way to finish it off, obviously, the, other than the children eating the muffins, is having a, a panel of judges. We've got our six muffins here, looking very different, and we have got our table of scores. We're going to be judging you upon your look, the taste, the texture, the smell, and then teamwork, OK, which was very important as well. Very good texture. You can then give them the scores, whether it be for taste, whether it be for texture, whether it be for teamwork. Mm. And then obviously you end up with a, a final winner. But very nice. Crispy on top still. The most important thing I think the children need to understand is the fact that when you get to the end of the lesson, then the team with the highest score have got that because they've measured accurately. They've followed the recipe and they've come away with the best muffin. The best chefs really are the best chefs. Can you give them a big round of applause, please? Capacity Puddle is an exciting activity to engage children in thinking about the capacity of different shaped and sized containers. I have a container here. If I fill this up with liquid, what might I be talking about when I'm thinking about capacity? Oliver. Um, capacity is how much you've got in a bottle or um, a container or a jar. Fantastic. Two team points. Well done. We're thinking about how much liquid, and in today's case it will be water, can be fitted in a container. So we will be going outside with different size and shape containers and estimate capacity. What you will use is a piece of chalk, and with your chalk on the pavement, on the playground, you're going to draw the puddle size that you think it's going to make. So I'm estimating that the liquid in this container is going to fill up this puddle space. And when you're happy with your puddle space, you will pour your liquid 
into the centre so that it can spread out nicely and you will see whether your estimate was accurate or not. Obviously we need a nice dry sunny day for this activity. So it's a piece of chalk ready for your estimations. It's also important for the children to know they need to be responsible in this activity because there's lots of water around plus lots of different containers. Because this one's small and it's fat and that one's tall and it's thin so you're not sure which one's the smallest. Yeah. The children then in their pairs can consider the containers that they have in front of them and start thinking about working in a systematic way. Are they going to work from their smallest container up to the largest or vice versa? If I had the smallest one and I picked the smallest one, then it will go smallest and then it will go to biggest and I could draw the biggest chalk. Hmm. Once the children have made a decision about their containers, they need to make an estimate of the amount of capacity in each one. To do this, they can take a piece of chalk and draw a circle which they feel will be the size of the puddle that the liquid in the container will create. Just a word of caution, they will need to find a nice level surface. It is quite nice for the children to engage in dialogue together about whether they think their estimate is accurate. Right, so this is your estimation for which bottle, which uh, container? Um, that one. This one. And what yeah. did you notice about your estimates? Um, that it was too a, bit small. a bit too small bit and the bottle small. was actually a bit big. OK, so the puddle was a lot bigger than your estimation. Mm, yeah. So then we moved on. With the water poured into the puddle, children are then able to reflect on whether their estimation was correct. This can then help them in their future judgments. For example, if their bottle is slightly bigger than the previous one, then they would know that their puddle and their estimation has got to be bigger than the puddle that was created before. OK, that's great, guys. Well done. So, what did we notice about your estimate? It was not too big, but not too small for the bottle. So it's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Are you happy with that, Erin? Yeah. yeah. I think that's a really good estimate. Well done. A collaborative way of doing the plenary of the lesson would be for each child to have a different container and they have to organise themselves in order from smallest to largest or largest to smallest depending on how much capacity is in their container. Once they've ordered themselves in line, they can empty their container and compare the size of their puddles to see if they have positioned themselves in the correct places. This is a great lesson activity for children to experiment with capacity, become confident about their judgments and of course have fun.